What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode 16 of season 2 of Wrecked Bike Reboot. I am Chase on Two Wheels and that is Brian, aka Brain, the mechanic and the genius behind making this thing actually run not like a piece of shit and making sure this episode and series doesn't last for like four years. How many, how long do you think it would take me to do this by myself? Like, at I, least a solid year, right? Honestly, if you had to do this whole job by yourself, I'm not sure it would actually get done. Truth. Guys, this is a Patreon funded YouTube motorcycle build series funded by the beautiful people over on Patreon who are part of this series, help us make decisions, and they're the same people in that little live stream watching this stuff live right now. So if you enjoy these type of videos in this series, make sure to help us make this series even better by jumping over on Patreon. It is the top link down below. And as usual, that's pretty much all I say because we got to fund the thing, but we also want to build the stuff. So uh, if you guys haven't watched episode 15, Brian and I were working on this front area up here. Ran into some issues. Didn't have, what was it? We didn't have grip glue. Didn't have grip glue. Didn't have the proper front brake lever. We're still working on the front brake lever. We're not gonna be able to fix that today, but yeah, we still have a brake lever issue. We're gonna get that figured out at some point, just not today. And what else do we, what else were we trying to figure out? Oh, we had to Dremel this little guy out. We got that squared away. It was just so late in the day that we kind of just left it where we were at and we were going to continue once we got the grip clue because obviously we have to put the grips on first. Right, and we, uh, you guys, it, you guys that have been watching, Brian has literally said something about fucking waterproof grease for like, I don't know, probably 10 episodes now. Something like that. So Brian, waterproof grease for you. Waterproof grease for the motorcycle, not for me. Oh, dude, did you see? It looks like um, there's little fishing lures. Can you guys see like little... You know what I'm talking about? The, uh, the Dude, I'm, sparkling I'm, I'm the straight from South Georgia, like no <laughs> lie. And we have Renthal Grip Glue. So this is the grip glue that ugh, Ryan, I almost called you Ryan. Brian was talking about that takes some time to dry, but allows you to work with it a little bit easier. Yeah, we're not going to be shitting ourselves when we put that on and we're like, get it on as fast as possible. So those are going to go on. What else we got over here? So I kind of have everything laid out as to what we're trying to accomplish for the day. Yep. We have uh, grips with the grip glue, uh, the um, the clutch lever guard, which is over there, I didn't bring to the table yet. Yep. Uh, we have LED headlight bulbs to swap out into the headlight housing. Yeah, we have the stock headlights so right there. There may be some uh, modifications necessary to get these to fit within the housing, but we'll uh, we'll get to that later. Oh yeah, so these things, these things are really freaking cool. I, there's no photo, so we won't be able to show you guys. But basically the ZX-10 has the integrated um, mirrors. It has the turn signals in there, but we want a stealth look. So these things are turn signals that fit on the side of the stock mirrors, not mirrors, but lights. And they're like your turn signals. So the side of your mirror or your, oh my God. You're can't a mess. Talk, can't it's like nuts and bolts with you. Here you go. Just go, Brian. Just All right, so tell them. These, uh, these blinkers mount onto the front upper along the edge of the headlight and uh, replace the blinkers that were in the mirrors that we have since deleted. That, that's what I was trying to say. Thank you, Brian. Not only can you uh, work on bikes better, you can also talk better, which is sad because it's literally all I do for a living. <laughs> so I have our integrated tail light. Which oh, will, which right. Which will be running, brake, and blinkers all in one assembly. It is everything, isn't it? It sure is. Gotcha, so guys, that's going to replace having, um, a lot of you guys were asking if we're gonna use this thing, which is what the guy that had the bike beforehand, it goes there and that's your blinkers. But so instead of having anything there, the only thing underneath the tail is literally just gonna be like a license plate bracket. I don't have a license plate bracket. We can make one. <laughs> we might make one. We got, we certainly got enough parts. All right guys, uh, so that's what we're gonna try to do today. If we can get all of that done in a good amount of time, uh, we might play with the shock to get it mounted a little better. But that's our goal today. So without further ado, we will begin. And this is where I act like I dropped the camera, but I don't actually drop the camera. Do you have, do you have, do you have a file? Uh, like files. Cause I would like to take just a hair more out of there so it goes in a little bit smoother. You know, Brian, I don't have the Me and Brian are like dueling both the <laughs> but it's like, all right, let's check this one. I don't think I have a file. Well, we can make a little bit more noise with the Dremel for a moment just to uh, 
just to clear that out just a hair more. So you're saying just to, to with it. yeah, just open this just up a little bit more? Just a tiny bit more. I mean, it's, it's so close to being there. I mean, this is the part that actually goes in and it will just get started, uh, but it stops right about there. Yeah, okay. So instead of having to like hammer the thing in, yeah. just open it up. <laughs> yeah, based on what just, just happened. Hair. Yeah, exactly. So we don't have to do that. We don't want that to happen because what's going to happen? The farther that goes in is the, the more exacerbated what you just did. Absolutely. And then the guy that gets the bike is going to be like, what I can't the get this. <laughs> How am I supposed to change these stupid what grips? What the hell? Yeah, I don't like these grips. What the yeah. hell? Okay, let's take bets on how many um, Dremel heads you're going to go through this time. Uh, you know, you think you're going to have it down to one? Or? It's not a lot of material that needs to be taken away. So I'm going to say maybe two or three. <laughs> it's not a lot of material. So only probably like two or three heads. If you guys weren't watching last episode, well, what'd I you go know. through like five? At least five. At least five. Yeah. So Brian would like Dremel for like 30 seconds. At one time it was like literally two seconds and it like ripped. Yes. Yeah, so let's hope not that many uh, times this time. but it's taking longer to get the... I already got your little wedge thing. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, so you can already push it in right there. Woo-hoo-hoo! Caliente! All right, a little bit more? Yeah. So my, my grinding stone that I have here is kind of loading up with aluminum, so it's not really doing much of a job grinding it out anymore, so we're going to try and clean it off real quick. Wait, how do you... Okay. Wire brush. So that's going to clean the metal off of this? Hopefully it'll knock the aluminum off of the... So do you need two Dremels for... Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay. It might work, it might not. Usually you wind up having to grind some steel to get the aluminum off. Which is basically what your wire brush is made out of. Oh, I see. Just to put this out there, you know, cutting stuff with an angle grinder in your bare hands is like backyard mechanics 101, so... Granted, we're not outside, but... We're not in a full-blown shop either. Hey, it's not, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. I've worked in worse places. That's terrifying. Battery's already dead? Battery's already dead. Damn, son. Wait, do we have one on ready? No. <gasps> Wait, where is? <gasps> I know where it is. One moment. It's in a... It's in my camera things, I think. You guys, everybody, just pause. Brian, I found it. We can continue the power. Sorry, I was, I was filming stuff and I needed a... I'm not giving excuses, right, Brian? Ah, shit. That was almost as funny as you burning yourself. Uh, hey, I didn't... Oh, oh shit. All right, guys, I, I failed Brian. The uh, battery that I was very proud of, uh, it was also dead. I don't know how that thing was dead. I didn't really use it that much. Maybe I didn't charge it for him. Okay, so uh, we're charging batteries now. This is shitty. We're gonna move on to something else. My apologies, Brian, for ruining your efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> Fail! We can go ahead and put the grip on the other side. We could probably put the grip on this side, right? 
Uh, or what, how, I'd what? rather not heat the grip up like that. Oh yeah, heating the glue would probably not be a good time. Okay, well in that case, we'll just move on to the other side and put the grip on and then okay. boom sauce, whatever. That works for me. So guys, if you didn't yeah, see last episode. Gonna go on? This is controversial, Brian. So uh, I'm sure we have the, the driven package. Yes. For these, maybe there's actually instructions that say, they go on this way. By all means, Brian, look at the packaging. So, a lot of you guys are fans of the channel. You've been watching for a long time. You know that on my R6, I had these exact same grips, these driven grips. I installed them so that my thumb, how did I install them? Metal piece inward. Yeah, so I installed the metal piece inward, so this way, for this side. And that is because most of the grip was here and your thumb could rest in this area. That's how I felt they felt the best and everybody always gave me shit. I'm like, Chase, you install them backwards. And I was like, I don't care, they feel good. Oh God. <laughs> I just think I'm just gonna throw it. I did, I kind of was like, oh shit. Dude, I'm looking them up. I gotta figure out what they're called though. Driven motorcycle. Dude, this guy is putting them on the way I did. Yeah, that guy is too. These are totally, that's exactly how they go on. Good for you, Chase. All of these people telling me this bullshit. I mean, that, they actually, they feel right that way. That's, and if they feel right that way, Brian, then that's the right way to do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's official based on a Google image search. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real good way of telling, but. Yeah, yeah, that's the correct way. So, you get yourself again? No. Your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> your thumb is supposed to go in this little groove area. If you get driven racing grip, whatever, grips, thumb. You feel confident about your Dremel job on the. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I'm, uh, I'm worried about making a mess on these. What do you mean? Well, these things actually fit really, really tight. Uh -huh. um, but you always want to use some sort of adhesive to stick them on there. Yeah. Um, so you if put you some put, like right here. See, that's the whole thing is if you put it on the tube. Yeah. And you go to slide the grip on it, just squeegees all the glue off to the end. Oh, because it's so tight, right. So what you want to do is you want to put it on the inside of the grip. Yeah. So when you slide it on, it kind of smears it down the inside of the grip so on the yeah, way through. So you just put like a little but bit. But you always wind up with an extra a lot extra down here like all the excess mm. comes to this end and then it gets stuck on the end of your throttle tube and, and that just causes so I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this without making a mess there but i think i'm gonna wind up having to make a mess and then clean it yeah do we just need to have like blue towels on on deck well it's not gonna be it's not like it's gonna fall over the floor or anything but <laughs> it's, it's not cool under that bullshit brake fluid <laughs> Correct. Like literally it'll dry in your hand, you can roll it up like a booger. Oh man, how exciting is that? <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed my explanation. How that works. Smell. Oh. <laughs> you took a big ass whiff of that. I, didn't you? Well, you, anytime anybody tells you to smell something, that's usually not good. Brian, I, you know, I, I think I might have too much faith in you. When you tell me to do something, I'm like, you know what? He knows more than I do, so I'm just gonna go with this. So you said we have to index everything? What does that mean? Well, some people like to call it clocking. Okay. Do you see the little driven logo? Uh, confirmed, we can see the driven logo. So up here on this side, there's another driven logo in the rubber. Got and it. And then there's also the model of grip is a, the D3 uh -huh. is here as well. So you kind of want to put everything in line so it looks pretty. How the shit do you do that? So you kind of just kind of... This is where having an OCD mechanic help you with projects comes in handy because this bike is going to be like OCD proof and you all are going to be able to thank Brian for that. 
So oh, you did that real quickly. Okay. There, there, and there. Everything kind of. All right. So make sure, kids, make sure you index your motorcycles. If you need to. If you're OCD. You can put that back in. Make sure. Well, now, Brian, this is a Kawasaki part. Now, we need to use every bit of blue Loctite that we can possibly find in this garage. There's actually a lot on here already, but we'll put a little more on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking when I said that. Well, you don't want your meter to fall off, right? Hell no. Click. <laughs> Man, every time I see that mirror, it's almost worth the money that it costs. <laughs> I can't talk shit because, like, I had that on my personal bike, so that means I wasted that much money personally to have that mirror. Did you wreck that bike? Shut up, Brian. And leave it like that because we'll probably have to move and adjust that. That mirror That's fits fine. in really, really snug, but, like, there's not a lot of material you know, there. Yeah, that nut is about the right size. Can that focus? Damn, it can, okay. All right, back to maybe we have enough Dremel power now. Well, I'm still red, but you know what we can do? You can use that one, I can charge this one. Well, that didn't last very long, but I think that may have done it. No, still a little snug. So, can't do that grip. Uh, this is sad, we have like, this side doesn't have the grip. This yeah, side has the grip, the mirror, and no lever. No lever. <laughs> it's like, we can't finish anything. No. Should we just move on to the headlights then? I think so. All right, peeps, headlights while we charge this battery. Let it continue. So, of course, while I'm fixing the stream, Brian comes up to me and whispers to me, I got an idea. You're going to like my idea. And I'm like, Brian, I like most of your ideas. What are you talking about? So, we're still charging these little, little dinky whatevers. And then Brian has the genius idea of Let's get to work. Oh my god, like really with all these power tools we're like, Brian, this is all we have. What do you think? I think I like using that thing better. Should have been using it the whole time? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I like how that just like slipped past both of us, that there's this... <clears throat> this other massive uh, right. unit to use. It's like, no, let's use the tiny thing with less power. I'm trying to be energy efficient over here. Well, almost. Because it's so much bigger, you can put like a lot more force on it versus yeah. the little tiny Dremel, so... Yeah, because you got a better handle now. Yeah, so that kind of... Works good to put some sideways force on this thing and seems to be taking away a bit more material. Do you think that's, now that's enough? Warm. Yeah, now I bet it is now. We're almost there. I kind of just want it to slide into the edge and then I see, gotcha. We'll go from there. So we're almost there. <sighs> you keep doing that when I when we have air and I'm like, dude, you're gonna get metal in your mouth. I'm just waiting <laughs> it for be it. The first time. That's not a good thing, Brian. All right, I think that's good enough now. Yeah, it's good enough to like pound in. Yeah, just a little tap. Yeah, so we're gonna start with the grip side. Guys, if you don't really know what we're doing, that thing was supposed to fit straight in there, but there's ridges, so it doesn't fit all the way in. So we're having to grind it down. And that shit takes forever. The majority of them are off. I'm not gonna touch it, because it's probably freaking hot. Go ahead, Chase, touch it. No. I wonder if the heat is making that side easier. No, it's because there's no ridges on it. Like the other side, we had to grind some of the stuff off. Right, 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 right. Ew, gross. It's oozing out. Oh, bro, it's going to fall. No. I'll just take it now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I literally followed it down, and then all this is like hand, just grab it. Brian, you look too excited to do this. You, you really should have had some type of like paper mache class. You would have dug it. You know, I, I honestly, I made stuff out of wood and metal instead. Well, okay. So you just, you switched out paper mache for wood and metal. Yeah, pretty much. That's fair. Go check my symmetry to see where I'm at. All right. So you're basically pointing at the top of the frame. Like the, the line of the frame is almost uh, even with the that line you have pretty close oh yeah absolutely because that is shooting right at the top that's on cool and then we'll get that again put said uh said doohickey in 
Did you just say the word doohickey? Doohickey. Oh my call? gosh, professional thingy. Well, I use lots of words to call things probably what they're not. So this is the lever guard, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you ever find yourself on the road racing, which who knows, I don't know what kind of milk you like in your cereal, this is gonna save your clutch from getting pushed in. Accidentally or on purpose. Yeah, so if you have anybody trying to mess with you, this will help you. Probably. I don't know how that would hurt you, but you never know. This thing's pissing me off now. Oh, snap. Why? Because it seems like you got it working. Yeah, but it's really hard to turn. And that it makes just you like worry. And spin yeah. right in. So. so that makes you sketched out that the threads are messed up? Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to... Tap and die it! Tap, exactly. No, I know how to... I know this shit. Ugh. Tap and die metric. All right, so you got that dyed out? Yes. Did a lot of pieces come off of it? Like, do you feel like that actually, oh wow, shit, never mind. I'm sitting here talking to you as you're like, just pushing it through with your fingers, which is entirely different than it was. Did, is it just me or did that go in easier than it did previously? Maybe. But, there's your clutch card. You know, I know it's pointless, but that shit looks kind of cool. Wait, what's this extra piece? I'm not sure what, uh, I guess if you have a different style of, this would actually get hammered in. Oh, and like, and but how do you get, how'd you get you that You would off? never get it back out. Uh, this is like a one-time use kind of deal. So. But in a situation like that, what would happen with grips? Like, if your grips got screwed, like, what do you, you're just screwed? Well, you take the bolt out and you take the thing off, but you leave the thing inside the handlebar. But oh. if your handlebar gets bent, or you break your handlebar, then screwed. you need a new one of those. Gotcha. Okay. I think it's really hard to, like, appreciate how cool that's going to look, but I think from the rider perspective, that's going to look like... And you can make this longer. Oh, right, because so you can, like, loosen, loosen up right and here. And slide this out. I don't know, though. I kind of like it being... It's about the right length. Yeah, I like it where being it right off of the size of the lever. Some people like their levers, like, out a little bit further. Oh, right. Because they have... Big yeah, games. that's a good point. That So, whoever gets the bike is going to be able to adjust that to however yes, they sir. like it. But that is... Oh, dude, from here, that looks really cool. I All am... Right. I'm happy with that, man. So, we've got grips on... Lever guard on, mirror on. Yep. Uh, and we can't do the lever yet, so we're gonna move on. Uh, I think next is start on the headlight. Wait, where did we? Oh, over here. Yeah, I say let's figure out how to get these LEDs into uh, a headlight. So supposedly, there's a conversion kit that should just work. Should just have to plug it in, and it does its thing. Is that what's gonna happen? Who knows? I'm gonna have to clean the back of that before we officially install, install that dish. Are you serious? Did they do the same thing? What's that? You buy an LED conversion kit, and it comes with one LED. I honestly have never seen an LED kit come with a ballast in it. So a good, that should be a good thing, right? Because it has... It's usually just you plug that in, and there's, you just plug the wiring harness right into it. Man. Yeah, that thing is kind of crazy looking. I mean, that's if a, that's gonna that's get, a, if 
that's going to get like all that ballast and shit, there's no room for that thing. Son of a bitch. Dude, look at that. Yeah. That's usually what HIDs look like. Again, though, this is a situation where it was like, yeah, stock, like, fits, fits the ZX-10. I mean, like, could you put the ballast, like, right here? Like, assuming this actually works. Um, well, this goes here. Right, and then this okay. goes onto this. So, I would have to say that... No, there's not going to be quite enough room. Oh, because that area is basically this. Shit. All right, let's let's mess with it and see. I mean, there's an area right here where we might like, right here, that you could like 3M and like put the ballast there if we had to. Do you want to look at that though? Oh yeah, you would be able to see it, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. So this would have to be popped into here. Ballast would have to be like that. Yeah, that would look like shit. Where does this even plug into, though? Like this guy. Because we have two of these. In this part, it actually gets plugged in inside the headlight housing where the other wire goes on the bulb. So this thing goes in, and then the ballast comes out, and then this thing plugs back in. So you'd have these blue fucking atrocious... Well, let's take this back off real quick. Okay. It's the wrong plug. What in the hell is happening right now? So, this is... Dude, there's no freaking way this fits in there. No. Not even kind of close. This is an H7 bulb. What bulb is this? That's an H4. H4. Wrong bulb. Dude, all of the forums said H4. That's what you get for not looking at the parts fish versus listening to people on the forum. Because you know the guy on the internet doesn't know f***ing shit. Brian. That's why we refer, refer to them as the guy on the internet and not anything more than that. <sighs> Thanks, guy on the internet. You f***ing suck. Okay. Here's what we learned. Here's what I learned. <laughs> yeah, because... I knew that shit already. Yeah. The guy on the internet's a fucking idiot. So... He likes to make everybody think that he has a clue, but really what he does is he sits behind his terminal all day and beats off to computer porn. So, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Was that uh, a little too much? <laughs> that may have been a little too much. Those are those thoughts that run through my head that most people aren't ready for. That one kind of just fell out real quick there. <laughs> oh Lord God! Man, okay, I, I just pissed somebody off really fucking bad, <laughs> and honestly, I don't give a fuck. Uh, the bad news is not gonna do LEDs today. The good news is we now know that I have an H7 bulb, and I'm not gonna listen to the internet people. Dun, da, da, da. Yeah, that really sucks because that that means we can't. Uh... I mean, even if you just want a for instance. <sighs> Let's say the base of this was this the right size. Mm -hmm. Look how massive this thing is. Yeah. You know, let's say that did fit in there. You're gonna have all this shit hanging out, and then all this shit hanging out, and that's kind of mad. I mean, I want LEDs, but like, I don't Do want. Do you want to pay this price? You know what I mean. This is the price to get LEDs. I've seen LEDs that are just one single unit that had. You just plug into it. Okay, yeah, that's what I need to find then, because that is... I, ain't, I don't want nothing to do with that, all that. Wow. This is... That's massive. Dude, it has its own than... fan on the back. Yeah, because when you start stepping the electricity up or down, it creates a lot of heat. Yeah. So instead of melting your headlight housing, it uses a fan to keep everything... Yep. All right, guys, so I'm going to have to do more research. That wasn't me. That piece. Uh, I'm going to do more research on LEDs, because I want this bike to have LEDs, but I'm not... Are you kidding me? No. 
Uh, I'm going to do some more research and I doubt I'll have it for next episode because obviously we'll have to research it after we film this and then I'll order it. It might be here, it might not, we'll see. But I'm um, definitely going to get different LEDs. That we're trying to make too clean of a bike to have all that kind of shit hanging off. So uh, luckily we've got plenty of stuff to work on. So we're going to shelve the lights, shelve the blinkers. We'll move on to the uh, integrated tail light now. Damn it. Also, before I get LEDs, I'm cleaning this whole thing. That's not going to be on a, on footage though, guys. I'm not going to make video of grabbing alcohol wipes and wiping down rubber. <laughs> Unless you're into that. I'm just kidding. Still not going to do it. Balance exactly. Like th So guys, this is how this thing is packaged. So it, you would make the assumption if it's a kit, that's like, okay, that's all I need to buy. And <laughs> but like, and then you can see shit at the bottom. You just make the assumption that like, oh, the other giant thing is at the bottom. And then, right. cause this was, you know. Yeah. Man, this little deceptive ass packaging. And who the hell is going to buy one LED for one side? It, it should be like single. Does it say single? Please fucking Christ don't say single. Yeah, no, no, look at that. Nothing on there says single. Speed metal LED conversion kit H. Okay, the H4. Granted, my fault. I shouldn't listen to internet people, but like, hey. And the and the freaking the freaking these things. The removal things for the passenger pegs. Same way. There only came in one. I don't understand these companies, man. Okay, wait. So now we know it's an H7. So will all H7 bulbs work? Yes. No shit. That is frustrating. So this one has no ballasts, and... It's all one solid unit. And it's the same plug that the back of it is. Yes. Now, the only shitty part about it is is that this is going to stick out of that cap. Right? Okay, so what would we do about that if it sticks we, out some? We have a couple of choices. Okay. Choice number one would be to remove the cap. Yeah, just leave it off? That sounds like not safe though, right? Well, then you can get water inside your headlight housing. Got it. Uh, choice number two would be to use a hole saw. Okay. And cut a perfect circle. That fit it. To, for it to slide. Now, the hard part about that is you don't know where it's going to go on that cover. Because just because there's a round cover on it doesn't mean that that headlight bulb is perfectly centered in that cover. Okay. So you need to figure out where that hole needs to be in that cover for it to slide over. And to boot, those caps are quarter turn. Yeah, so you... So you'd have to put it, like, if it wasn't centered when you put it on, you'd have to, like, put pressure on the bulb to, like, and then snap it in place. Interesting. Um, so there's some things that need to be worked out to make that work okay. properly. How confident do you feel that we could do that? It can be done. It's going to take some time, though. With that mentality, we get these... We get these LEDs that fit into there. We know it plugs in correctly, and we know we're gonna have to cut the the back door off, basically a circle mm -hmm. out of the back door. Is there a type of like liquid rubber that we could buy to put around it to make sure it's sealed, or is that like overkill? Or well, here's my issue with that: is this part gets really hot. Oh, so it would melt the rubber. Right. So that's why you need to use almost like as good a fit as you can get with the plastic. So this is the light. He's talking about this little area down here is good. That would be like the rubber would basically go like along that. Right. Which if you're using rubber, the amount of heat that thing is going to produce over time is yeah, pretty much going to melt any sort of rubber that you can put in there. So, so if we, if we got it to fit around it and it fit well, like would water still get in there? I mean, even those caps, they're not waterproof. They're just water resistant. Oh, I so see. So okay. it's not like you still can't get moisture past them. Yeah. Um, but if you have like a big ugly hole and it doesn't fit snugly, well then it's obviously going to make its way in there. I mean, there are some precautions we can take to make it fit a little bit better. Okay. Which we would do anyway. Yeah. It's kind of just, you know. <laughs> Why is the last photo on the Amazon thing this? <laughs> what is the that? Jesus Christ, what the hell? Okay guys, we've been doing the research and we've came up with uh, this pair. 
Also, 8,000 lumens, we were about to put 22 hundo. So we're getting better ones, and they're cheap as hell, 35. Are, are LEDs regularly that cheap? Because I feel like they should be more expensive. Um, or am I just off? Like my pricing. How much are they? 34.95. Those are probably gonna take like six months to get here. They're probably some Chinese thing for... No sir, prime shipping. We'll have it in two days. Mm, that sounds not right. Interesting. Well, we're gonna buy them anyway and see what happens because we can have those by next episode. Normally they would be like 80 bucks a piece. Hmm. 60 bucks a piece. No. Okay. Okay, so I just dumped a card on this camera and I was enlightened by my beautiful wife that we have a birthday thing and we have 30 to 40 minutes to finish whatever we can on this episode. So, Brian is done doing his live stream while I dump the footage. By the way, if you guys are at the top level of the Patreon stuff and you watch the build streams, while I'm dumping cards, Brian does a live Q&A on the stuff. It's really awesome. Get to literally talk to a genius mechanic. So. I'm, Brian, I'm thinking we just go straight for the tail light and then we see where we're at at that point. All right, we're gonna try to get this uh, integrated tail light put on. Time is of the essence. You gotta appreciate Brian. I say we're, we gotta rock some tail light shit out. And he's like, all right, and going straight at it. Screw your camera, screw this footage. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Well, Stock you know, tail light. I know that uh, we are pressed for time in total. Dude, holy shit. That was real close. You almost got a face full of ABS plastic. Well, that was, no, that was the screwdriver. Oh shit. That was almost stitches right there. Man. Oh dude, I didn't even see that part. <laughs> All I saw was the fairing pop. All right, so since Brian got the uh, rear tail light taken off at warp speed, man, this leg is done, I think. Now you need a fat ass track. Oh, oh how sad, look how sad that is. <laughs> oh, it's going. Okay, you're not gonna fall all the way down. Uh-oh. Watch it have no wires and, oh, thank God, okay. Damn, look at that cleanness. Oh, and it smoked? Oh, hell yes it is. This is an example of, oh, never mind. Those aren't as bad. I thought those were legit just wires. I think these are worse. I'd rather have just wires. Really? Because to try and get these out of the connector is Without such a them? pain in the dick. It's well, almost easier just to cut the wires and solder them in place than it is to with the- Interesting. So this is the connector that you have to take out? Yes. E. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna clip the wire and- <laughs> I love it. That. Here. I have soldering metal somewhere. I will find it. Did you say soldering metal? Yeah, soldering metal. It's stuff. called solder. Uh oh, it's lit like the metal is called solder. Yes. Hi guys, I'm Chase, and welcome to your first episode of Soldering with Brian. <laughs> I'm not Brian. <laughs> okay, so Brian, what are the metal metal things that you're like, dude? I ain't, I ain't got no time for that. Um, do they have a name or? They they do. They're uh, I forget what type of terminal they are, but it is a terminal. Gotcha. And you're like, screw that. I'll just cut them and solder them myself. Yeah, because to try and get the terminal out of the clip, and then yes. and then back in, yeah. it's just no. There's a better chance of you wrecking the terminal or the clip itself than there is for you to just clip the wire and solder it. And if you wrecked it, you'd have to then solder it and cut it and shit. If you wreck the clip, then you'd actually have to cut the harness side gotcha. because you have nothing to plug into. And then you're either going to put a buck connector or a flat blade connector, or not a buck connector because then you can't take them apart, but a, a bullet connector or a flat blade connector and kind of make your own plugs to plug everything in. Gotcha, so might as well just go ahead and do, do it, it the way you like doing it. Exactly. All right, cool. So let's just uh, slide this in place. I threw that and I think there's another piece of rubber on it. So 
here's one of the things that is nice and not nice at the same time. You get these integrated tail lights and they give you all this wire yeah. to work with. But the connector's right here. Why is it just to give you more just, one of just those, in case? Yeah, one of those things where like, you know what? I'm just gonna give him some wire. I mean, to be fair, I guess I'd rather have more than... Exactly, than not enough. Too yeah. much than not enough, for sure. So what we're gonna do is let's get our little connectors that we've cut off already. Nice. And you just took those off of the stock headlight? Off of the... Uh, these were oh, actually the wired onto signals. that weird turn signal thing that was previously installed on here. Because as a, as a brake light, it's the plug and play, right? Like you just plugged in the braking yes. part of that, it. That also controls the ground wire for the blinkers. If you know there's only two wires here, mm -hmm. one left, one right, this is all power. Okay. The ground is grounded through this harness that we've already plugged in. Ah, I see, okay. So, so right, so that's going to be about that long. So we literally just have that much wire that we need. Good and lord. We can cut the rest of that off. Yeah. Here we go. We're just going to give ourselves a little bit of wire to work with. We don't have to go too crazy. So that should be enough. Okay. Okay. Now I'm not going to just instantly put these things on and solder them because we don't know which one's right and which one's left. Right. So how do you... So what we're going to do is we're just going to strip some wire back on each one of these, power the system, and turn on a blinker and see if the correct side is blinking. All right, so we're just going to plug in here. So these are the stock plugs for the blinkers. Right. Got it. So this is the... For Kawasaki, all the wires are the same color. Oh, shit. So okay. if you have a Yamaha, left is brown and right is green. Uh -huh. uh, for Kawasaki, this stuff is kind of just uh, universal. Interesting. Uh, one is power and one is ground. For Cowie, the black with the yellow stripe is your ground. Yeah. Sometimes it's the green. Green is a ground wire for some places. So, so it's not consistent throughout the bike. Well, it's not consistent from brand to brand. Got it. So once you find the ground in a machine, it's going to stay the ground in a machine. Okay. Which we really don't have to plug them both in. One would suffice. But... Why not at this point? I like to be thorough. That's the right. That's the right? Uh-huh. So we have them backwards. Now all we have to do is uh, switch them. know that the gray, right, the gray connector. Where's the, that at? The gray connector right here. Oh, because these are different colors. Gray. Nice. This is where your colors change. It's down here at the connector. So the gray connector belongs with the yellow wire. Cool. That makes sense? I do. I'm, I'm following so okay. far. So this is where you're going to get your soldering lesson. Okay. Being that I kind of fetched that wire a bit, I'm going to clip it and re-strip it because we have plenty of wire to use. And you can't un... It's kind of hard to straighten it back out again to do this the way that I'm going to show you how to do it. Gotcha. Okay. Which is really like the best way um, and not have to worry about your connection falling apart ever. Okay. So this is the the way to solder motorcycle wiring. This is the way I was taught. Okay. So I'm going to share that information with you. Did we we have shrink tubing, right? So something about this size should work. I'm gonna start heating this up. Okay. So I'm just gonna yeah. turn that on, red lights on, I'm just gonna put this down here and let that get hot. Alright. We are going to drop the piece of shrink tubing on. So we're going to take these two pieces of wire and we're just going to insert them into each other. It's like pushing them into each other? Can you see that? Yeah. Like the wires are getting all bunched up all right. and shit. So once they're together, yeah. you just kind of give them a little bit of a twist. Okay, so you basically headbutt the wires and then twist them up. Yes, sir. So it's like a Triceratops fight that got bitten by a crocodile. Because you know how when crocodiles bite shit, they like bite it and twist around? Okay, see how that's together and twisted? Damn, son, that is... Actually, I don't know if it's focusing, so you guys are just going to have to be deal with it. Okay, so we've got them All twisted right. together. So now we're just going to test to make sure their iron is hot, which it is. Okay. 
I'm going to heat the wire, feed the solder, and you'll see the wire itself suck all that solder up. Wait, so you're putting the soldering iron underneath the wires? Touching the wire with the soldering iron and then feeding the solder onto the wire, not onto the iron. Ah, I see. So if you can see, that whole thing is now one color solid. That is one wire yeah. now. Okay, so now you put the... The shrink tubing comes up here. Got right? it. This is my favorite thing about these soldering irons. Is Can you see that little red dot? I can. So that little red dot, there is heat blasting out of that thing. Are you going to use that as a heat gun? Like a little mini heat gun? Are you freaking serious right now? <laughs> and I want to do the top of it as well so it shrinks evenly. There you go. Dude, no shit. I literally have a heat gun because I thought I had to buy it to do that shit. There you go. Now you see why I clipped off that twisted piece of wire? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do that on both sides. Yeah, that would be such a pain in the ass to, to do the try little triceratops headbutt thing. Yep. Sort of when you were fixing the monster, I was like, okay, I need everything. Work these two together and give them a twist. All right? Yeah, making sure it's hot enough, and then we'll just feed it right into the wire. Shrink tubing in place. Little sort of heat gun. I mean, sort of my ass, it does the exact job you need it to. So now we're gonna tape some stuff off so it's clean. We've got tape in here up here. Yeah. We always try to put all the links in the description for the tools we use, the parts we put on the bike, stuff like that. So the one that I have is actually Blue Point brand, which is a Snap-On's step-down brand. Gotcha. Uh, but it's made by Weller. <laughs> so it's the same one it branded is the same differently. One. It's branded differently. We have these spare wires hanging, right? We don't need them hanging around, right? Oh, because these were the ground, but now the grounds that we don't need yeah. exactly. So we're just gonna roll that down. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap these off. So that's fairly clean, but not as clean as I would like it. I'm just going to come right from here. Man, I got lucky on the length with that thing, didn't I? Yeah, you coming in, coming in pretty tight. And that's your integrated tail light, my man. Dude, that was blazing fast. Holy shit. So I know we can't test the... Ooh, we're going to have a problem testing any of these brake switches because we ain't got one for anywhere. <laughs> we have no brakes. Here we go. Wait, how the f*** are you doing? Are you literally pressing it? Hold on. What are you doing to do yeah, that? This, the switch is here. It's a way over here. That little itty bitty blue... Wait, can y'all even... Oh yeah, you can't... That's the switch? That's a brake light switch. Hold on. Push it again. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. So we got that. So here's what I also like to check. We got blinker, right? Yep. Right side. And brake light. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. Those are working. And then Left side and brake light. If you notice how fast the blinker was blinking, uh huh. Um, these particular bikes come with an incandescent bulb for uh -huh. the blinker. Yeah. They have a much larger draw of power than an LED does. Okay. So the flasher relay for the blinker system kind of doesn't handle the low draw very well. Yeah. So it kind of just blinks really fast. Yeah. So the only way to slow that down is they make a what they refer to as a load equalizer. Oh, okay. It's kind of just a big resistor. Gotcha. That goes uh, in between both power wires or mm -hmm. both ground wires and one power wire of your blinker system whether you install it in the front or in the rear uh -huh. and then it just puts an excess load on the um on the flasher relay and then they'll blink at normal speed so that's going to be just like that once we get all the hardware in it yeah and there's your uh, smoked integrated led tail light dude turning that off that light looks so much better i don't remember how much i paid for that tail light but that company they make a, a nice product and their prices are extremely reasonable i've put yeah. a ton of that brand of uh yeah of integrated tail light in their fit and finish is good all their plugs work yeah um you know and i haven't had to take any off that were broken that's the and brand. what's what's the brand i ended up getting 
So I just lucked out then and got the right one, basically. Yes. Okay, cool. You know what? I'm fine with lucking out. They're, and, uh, they're honestly like the, one of the largest integrated taillight companies for power sports. I see. So you didn't really luck out. There's probably just not a whole lot of other choices. Good. DMP yeah. for, uh, for stuff like that. So recap. Yeah, shit. We got grips on. Yep. We got uh, the lever guard finished off and installed. Yep. Um, we figured out that we had the wrong LED headlights, so that's something that we need to rectify. We it sort was of, wrong sort in of rectified a lot of ways. It. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we sort of have that rectified already, but obviously the parts aren't here yet. We have the uh, integrated LED tail light installed, wired, and finished off, so that is all done now too. Cool. Uh, um, now we're short on time, so that's about all we're going to get done for the day. But at least we got you a couple things squared away. Yeah, you blazed through and you that integrated tail light. You got an awesome soldering lesson. All right, dudes. Um, like Brian said, we are short on time today, unfortunately, out of nowhere. Not out of nowhere, just... Out of Chase's Nowhere. Out of Chase's Nowhere, which is a <laughs> shocker to everyone. But guys, yeah, that's going to be the end of the video. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you enjoy the series, make sure to check out the Patreon page. You know, if we didn't have all the support we have over there, we wouldn't be able to give you guys these episodes and run these projects and give the bike away. Shocker. Uh, we're going to give this bike away when it's done. And that's how we run Record Bike Reboard. You guys help us fund it, and we build it up, and then give it back to you guys. So uh, it's a pretty cool setup. Guys, that's Brian, the brain. I'm Chase. This is Wreck Bike Rebuild Season 2, 2017 ZX10. We appreciate you watching to this point in the video because these videos are pretty long most of the time. But we'll see you guys on the next one where next one's 17. Oh, we got some cool shit coming out on episode 17. Let's just say them wheels, they going bye-bye on the, on the... Brian! God dang it. Not my garage. Oh <laughs> my, you threw it in the wrong direction. <laughs> is that better? This is what I deal with on the on day. <laughs> God, we'll see you guys in the next episode <laughs> later. <laughs>